I'm Abby. And I'm John. Your friendly NUB co-coordinators. While we normally love nothing more than shooting NUB videos for you, this is one we wish we didn't have to make. But unfortunately, we do. Each semester in philosophy alone, we bust epic numbers of students for plagiarism. So we want to talk to you a bit about plagiarism right now. You can learn more on Nagy University's uh, webpage under Academic Integrity, but we want to give you the highlights uh, today with this video. So at NU, we have what we call the AIB, or Academic Integrity Board, which is responsible for overseeing plagiarism and other forms of academic misconduct. So if a professor thinks you are cheating, he or she will levy whatever penalty they've outlined in their syllabus, which could be you know, an F on the assignment to an F for the course. It's totally up to them. But they also must report you to the Academic Integrity Board. Here to tell you more about this are some of our esteemed colleagues. I am really strict about plagiarism. If I have good evidence that a student in my class plagiarized or cheated on an exam, I'll just fail them for the whole course, no matter what. No matter what the other circumstances were, no matter how much work they'd already done for the course, that's it. And I report them to the academic dean. And in fact, I'm so serious about it that like one time a student plagiarized early in the course and because Niagara allows it, they could withdraw from the course instead of getting an F on their grade. It was early enough they could withdraw. And so now my policy is if I'm going to fail you for the course, I'm going to wait till after the withdrawal deadline to make sure the F stays on your transcript because I feel really strongly about it. So, of course, I, I want to explain why I feel so strongly about plagiarism. And uh, <coughs> when I ask students this, a lot of them assume that uh, it's because you're cheating yourself. You shouldn't plagiarize because you're cheating yourself. But honestly, that's not why my punishment is so harsh. I mean, you are cheating yourself, but that's a mistake you're making. You know, I think it's like, it's a little bit, that part is a little bit like paying a lot of money to a personal trainer at a gym and then just never showing up. Like, yeah, you've cheated yourself, that's a mistake. It's, it's kind of dumb, I think, but, but that's not the part I'm really punishing for. It's about fairness to the other students, but even that isn't the way students normally think. Students think that means, well, it's not fair that I worked hard for my grade and they didn't work hard for theirs. I don't really curve exactly for one thing, so that part doesn't matter, and uh, it's, that's not what it's about either. To me, uh, it's about the Niagara degree. So I ask my students, why didn't you, you could just buy a degree online. If you just want a degree, you can buy one really cheap online. You can get a PhD online for like 20 bucks. Why didn't you do that? And students quickly figure out the answer is, well, degrees from those schools don't mean anything. People know that those are worthless degrees. And I try to explain that the extent to which people can cheat their way through Ni Niagara, that's the extent to which Niagara is a worthless degree. So in other words, every time someone plagiarizes or cheats at Niagara, that makes it more likely that when you hand your diploma to an, a, a, someone who might hire you, it's more likely that person's going to say, oh, pff, Niagara, my nephew had a friend who cheated their way through that school. This paper doesn't mean anything. For all I know, you cheated your way through it. So what I'm trying to say is that you should be mad when you hear about another student plagiarizing or cheating, because they are stealing value from your degree. Your degree only means as much as the Niagara name, and the Niagara name gets degraded every time a student cheats their way through it. Hi, I'm Kevin Blair. I'm chair of the social work department here at Niagara University. I'll share with you a couple of the most common defenses that we would hear when I was chairing hearings for the AIB. The first defense, and probably the most common, was the I ran out of time. I had too much to do, there was no way to get it all done, so I ran out of time. Um, I think you can hear that, you know, it's not okay to cheat because I ran out of time. That's really not a defense that's going to work, not going to help you much. Second on that, I think you'll find that if you talk to any of your professors and you tell them what's going on in your life, family, work, whatever it is, mm -hmm they're going to work it out with you. They don't want you to cheat, to plagiarize. They want you to succeed. So come talk to them, and I'm sure pretty much everyone will find some way to help you out. That even includes if you've just totally goofed up. You've procrastinated, you've waited too long, you have really just put yourself in a bad situation, and it's nobody's fault but your own. 
you're not going to be the first college student to have that happen to them. And again, your professors are not here to penalize you. They're not here to give you Fs just because. Come talk to them. They will try to work it out. The last defense that I'll talk about in this particular video is the um, prove to me I cheated defense. This is the I'm innocent until proven guilty and you haven't proven it or you can't prove it. Um, that defense also tends not to work and I think I'll share quickly the sort of most egregious of the stories I have related to that. So we had a student and they were required to turn in a paper. They, they turned in about five pages of material and the professor in looking at the material knew that something was wrong right from the first paragraph. Looking through the paper, they could see all kinds of worries. Uh, they did a quick Google search and they found each part of the paper on one or more of the various websites that offer papers for sale. When confronted with the evidence taken directly from the websites, the student finally said, okay, you got me, that's what I did, but I should still get a passing grade, at least a D, because I actually turned in a paper. Even if I plagiarized, even if I kind of cheated, I still deserve a D because I turned in a paper. Um, I think you can see that defense is not going to work either. Um, in that particular case, we upheld the professor who had given an F for the paper, and the um, weight of the paper in the course meant that the student failed the class. I just wanted to make a quick comment about something Kevin said about the idea that students deserve a D if they turn something in, you know, even if it's plagiarized. Um, I guess I can just tell you that in my courses, if you turn in a complete piece of crap paper, you know, something like a Kanisha student would write, um, I'll give you an F and I'll cry. If you plagiarize, I will catch you and I'll give you a zero and I'll laugh. So don't think that plagiarizing is a way of sort of hitting some sort of a minimum. It's a way of going far below the minimum. An F is worth 50%, uh, a zero is worth 0%. Thanks. Hi, it's Abby again. Um, I'm currently a member of the Academic Integrity Board and just yesterday I was at a hearing and I'm telling you this story because I want to make clear that plagiarism isn't always the cut and dried sort of, hey, you, you cut and pasted from you know, some you know, Wikipedia kind of thing. This case involved a student who borrowed the lecture notes of another student in another course that covered um, a book by Descartes, but a different book. Um, and basically, the professor in the course that they, that they used the notes from was familiar with that other professor's class and lectures and busted them for plagiarism. And that professor's penalty was an F, um, an F in the course, even though the paper was only worth 12%. And the case came before us, and the student clearly was innocent in intent. He didn't, he didn't know that borrowing another student's lecture notes would have counted as plagiarism because it's not our classic case of like, hey, I went to Wikipedia. He really didn't know. Um, and we all believed him about that. Um, but basically, we asked the professor whether the student's intention made any difference to him, and he said, nope. And we asked if he wanted to go any lighter on the penalty, and he said, nope. And when we looked at Niagara's policy, which is really broad in scope, this met the definition of plagiarism. Even though it isn't the classic case, it fell within our policy, and we decided to uphold the professor's request. And so, kind of a heartbreaking story. Um, this was the end of semester. Again, the, the student was innocent in intent. That sometimes doesn't matter. And so we just wanted, I just wanted to tell you this because it's, it really, the, the penalties can be hardcore. What's covered under plagiarism um, is really, is really broad. And so, yeah, be really, really careful. When in doubt, cite it. Like, even if you don't know the correct citation form, like, you could really do, in this case, say, a footnote, footnote at the end of these, this professor's lecture notes, and the footnote could read, I don't know how to cite lecture notes, but these are lecture notes that I borrowed from my friend from so-and-so professor's lecture dated blah, blah, blah. That would save you a plagiarism violation. For real. Um, so, so when in doubt, do a move like that. Thanks a lot.